जय श्री राधे सब वैष्णव को जय श्री कृष्ण टुडे वन वन फोर एंड वार्ता नाइन्टी वन द स्टोरी ऑफ वन वेल्थी मनी लेंडर फ्रॉम मथुरा दिस इज अ डिवोटी ऑफ राजसी डिस्पोजिशन इन द इटर्नल डीलर हिज नेम इज मनोरूप शी बिलोंग्स टू श्री यमुना जीज ग्रुप ऑफ सखीज मैनिफेस्ट फ्रॉम चबी संगी एंड इज दस अ फॉर्म ऑफ हर डिवाइन लविंग सेंटिमेंट हेर ऑन दिस अर्थ ही वॉज बोर्न इन टू अ वेल्थी मनी लेंडर्स फैमिली इन मथुरा His fa- father ran a gold shop. He was married off when he was just 12 years old. Not long after the father died and the boy began to attend on the shop. He was however a divine soul and so he was always concerned with how he would be able to meet the Lord. He would ask this of each and every one who came to his shop. One day a chobi brahmin of Mathura came to his shop. He was a knowledgeable man. The money lender asked him, "Are you a wise? Can you lend can you tell me how I can meet the Lord? I am most anxious to meet with Shri Takuji." The chobi said, "Listen, You will meet him if you renounce your home and worship him whilst living in the forest but if you really want to know go to Gokul and meet with Shri Gosai ji who resides there he is very wise and has many disciples Chobe went home the next day the money lender journeyed to Gokul when he arrived there Shri Gosai ji was performing his daily devotions on Shri Takurani ghat When the money lender caught sight of him he saw a divine radiance he stood and just stared for a full half an hour then shri gosai ji saw him and with great grace asked him what he had come to inquire of him the money lender was surprised that shri gosai ji had known his inner heart before he had even asked he concluded that shri gosai ji was the lord himself he stood respectfully with his arms palms joined and said you are the lord and know my mind please take me into your shelter i surrender to you Shri Gosai ji replied tell me what exactly you came to ask me and then i shall accept you as my disciple the money lender said i have been wondering for a long time about how to meet the lord i have asked many wise men but all of them said i must renounce the world before i can meet shri takuji however great maharaj this would be very difficult for me how can i just leave my wife wealth and home i am still attached to my bodily necessities this is what i came here to ask you shri gosai ji replied you are right if you still harbor attachment to the body then leaving the home can itself be an obstruction If you up and leave you can become even more fallen through bad association Shri Takuji is not to be met through any specific practice either he meets the embodied soul only when he decides to show his grace therefore the duty of the embodied soul is simply to serve him then he will give his grace the embodied soul must serve the lord hearing this the money lender was very pleased he said oh maharaj now please take me into your shelter and let me serve the lord Shri Gosai ji told him to go and bathe in Shri Yamuna ji where after he would initiate him. He did so and then Shri Gosai ji initiated him with the Lord's name and Brahma Sambandh. He then instructed the money lender to accompany him into the temple. There you shall have the holy site of Shri Navanit Priya ji and then I shall grant you some seva. The money lender went to the temple with Shri Gosai ji and there was blessed with the divine sight of the child Krishna who loves butter he felt overwhelmed Shri Gosai ji then settled his lord down for a short rest and went to sit in his betak the money lender followed him there he bowed low low to Shri Gosai ji and sat down Shri Gosai ji asked what he was next what his what was his next request and he said that he would like to receive some seva of shri takuji and be taught the ways of service shri gosai ji graced him with the child krishna deity and told him to serve this his lord carefully and with much love knowing him to be the lord himself thus he should serve him in the same way that he was careful about his own needs like cold heat hunger sadness etc and never eat anything without first offering it all to shri takuji the lord enjoys the very best of everything therefore in this world whenever you see anything that is truly of outstanding quality you should offer that to the lord only then may you even think of using it for yourself in this way you will become detached from all other relationships then you will be fully surrendered to him the lord only blesses those who are fully dedicated to him stay at home and follow the ways of the path there are many male and female vaishnavas of modest means living in mathura you should associate with them they will help you in all the modes of seva do as they tell you you will become blessed soon having said this shri gosai ji went to partake of mahaprasad he also invited the money lender to accept prasad there having taken his meal shri gosai ji came out and gave the remains of his plate to the money lender he partook of this mahaprasad then took his leave of shri gosai ji and returned to mathura he sent his wife with another vaishnava to go to gokul telling her also to take initiation from shri gosai ji so that they can then serve the lord together she did just that and then the two of them began to serve the lord they also began 
to associate with the Mothra Vaishnavas. Soon their love for the Lord began to grow. They began to celebrate nice little festivals according to the season. They would call all the Vaishnavas to such events and soon formed a group. They all loved offering and all offered loving seva to the Lord. It was not long before the money, before the Lord began to grant his direct experience to the moneylender. Part 1. One day the moneylender Vaishnava gathered all the local Vaishnavas together to have a mango juice festival. The couple of modest means who were Sri Gosaiji's disciples lived in Mathura. Their rule was to only ever eat that which had been offered to their own Sri Takuji. If there was an invitation extended to them for a Vaishnav gathering, they would make sure to offer the same preparations to their own Sri Takuji, only they would they attend the meeting. Bar Prakash. The path of the righteous wife is explained is exactly this, only to eat what her husband eats. That's a Patibrata Istri. The Vaishnava couple would go to the Vaishnava groups just to show face, but they would make sure to first of all offer those exact same preparations to their own Sri Takuji at home. Then only would they partake of the Mahaprasad. This is the correct way within this path. This mood and mode is considered to be very elevated in the path of grace. In the Saravotam Stotra, Sri Gosaiji has recounted one of Sri Acharya's names to be Patibrata Patihi. Here, Patibrata refers to the chaste wife fully dedicated to her husband's pleasure alone. So the phrase here means that Sri Acharya is the husband to those devotees whose devotion to him is unswerving and unalloyed. Divine souls on the path of grace who serve the Lord and behave with these par- parameters within these parameters enjoy the same excellent fortune as the gopis of Vraja. In the eternal Lira, these two are Rati and Gati, two Sakis of Sri Yashodaji. They lived in Nanda's palace and were always ready to serve Sri Takuji there. They would always make new and interesting preparations. Sri Gosaiji always gave them Sri Takuji's plate after he had finished eating. They survived on this and nothing else. Both of them were very faithful devotees. Part 1 continued. On that day, the preparation was to be mango puree. All the mangoes available in the village had been taken over to the money lender's house. The husband and wife went to the market to try to get some mangoes, but there were none. They began to feel greatly distressed. At that very moment, a female vendor came to the market with a basket full of mangoes. Here it is demonstrated that when there is a deep burning divine desire to fe- please him, then that will be facilitated immediately. Part 1 continued. The Vaishnava couple asked her, Will you give us two pesi worth of mangoes? The lady said that they would have to buy the whole basket. They asked her how much that would cost and she replied that it would cost one rupee. The Vaishnavas asked, From where will we find one rupee? Then they said, If you can give us two or three days to pay, then we will do so. The Vaishnava couple then brought the mangoes to the banks of Sri Yamanaji and sat down to wash each mango individually. They offered each one of them mentally to their own Sri Takuji, who accepted all their offered mangoes there and then. It was at that very time that the mangoes were being offered in the money lender's house. They had squeezed all the juice out of them. There was not even one mango left in its full shape. The money lender sent one of his men to the market to bring more mangoes. He came to where the Vaishnavas were sitting and asked of the mango seller if he could buy the mangoes from her. She replied that the two Vaishnavas had already purchased the mangoes. The ma- Vaishnava said to him, It's okay, go ahead and take the mangoes, but you will have to pay the vendor the one rupee that we owe her. The man agreed, paid the one rupee and took the mangoes with him. The two Vaishnavas also returned home. At the moneylender's house, the mangoes were washed and began. he began to offer them. Sri Takuji piped up, These mangoes have already been offered by those two poor Vaishnavas. Sri Takuji, Vaishnava Sri Takuji, I will not accept your mangoes that have already been offered. He then called the two Vaishnavas and asked them if they had already offered the mangoes to their Sri Takuji. They said, Yes, we were offering them and Sri Takuji came there to enjoy. What to do? We had no money, so that is why we did what we did. The Vaishnava group sat down to partake of Mahaprasad. First of all, they enjoyed the puris, or fried breads, and mango puree that had been offered in the moneylender's house. Then they partook of the whole mangoes that the Vaishnavas had offered. They had a most divine taste because those Vaishnavas had offered them with intense love and longing to please him while sitting on the banks of Sri Yamanaji. Sri Takuji had been very, very happy to accept their offering there and then. Bhav Prakash. The moral of this story is that when a Vaishnava most lovingly makes an offering to their beloved Sri Takuji, wherever and however they do it, then in that very place and in that very manner, Sri Takuji, through the grace-filled, loving connection and mutual promise between him and Sri Acharyaji and Sri Gosaiji, appears there in his full form and willingly and joyfully accepts the offerings. Therefore, it is the duty of Vaishnavas to offer, to the best of their ability, only the very best of everything and anything to Sri Takuji. This is the principle here stated. 
Thus concludes Vartha 91, the story of the accompanied Vaishnava moneylender who was the recipient of Sri Gosaiji's great grace. There is truly no ending to the tale. Aj ke ananda ki jai ho wa. So sab Vaishnavan ko saprem or sadha jai Sri Krishna. Sri Acharya ji ki jai, Sri Gosaiji ki jai, jai jai Sri Radhe.